All right, folks, looks like we've got all the cameras rolling. Now we'll see if we can see what's going on up here. Speeding by, he's got a light on, I'm not sure why. So I'm not sure if you can hear me with the with the wind noise, but it's a good test. Going 60 miles an hour, but against the wind, so it feels like 80. Got all the cameras rolling. There's a fire. It's been burning for a while from what I gather. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to go through there. We'll find out. We'll go around a different way. See if we can find something interesting. Pretty dark section right there. Oh, it looks like they've got this uh, possibly quarantined off. may not be able to go through there. Well, I guess there's two ways to find out. So this is my first recording ride, I guess officially. I've got my camera pointed out back. I've got one camera engine mounted frontwards. I've got my GoPro the microphone in the helmet which you're listening to then I've got my reverse camera here which is not turned on right now but had it on earlier yeah it looks like they're blocking the road possibly yeah we'll have to go around a different way I was afraid of that Well, there's not too much of a derailment. A few minutes. I'll just try to come right back up uh, the road on the other side of uh, Rio Medina. Let's see where that takes me. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get out there. But uh, I'm going to go in the next one. Yeah, because this goes kind of far out here. A little bit further than I think that road is going to take me. Or, or at least right close to it. 
So either way, I think I'll be better off just going around to the right. I mean, big, doing a big loop like this. This is also the first time that I've ridden in uh, weather this warm on this bike, so. against the wind it, it feels like it is about as fast as I can go oh there's a good shot of the fire hope you can see that I don't want to get target fixated so I better learn <laughs> keep my eye on the road I don't remember which one of these roads I need to turn right. I think it's this first one. It looks like I'm going to get caught by these traffics. So it looks like I can make it. I'll just take a left right here. All right, get some air back into my helmet. Looks like they're running a big anaconda down here. I'm hoping that's just a rubber hose and not a hunger snake. Uh, looks like they got some kind of construction going on up here. So far, so good. I can hear a little bit of uh, tape flapping in the air, so that may be an issue with the microphone. But I'm pretty sure I'll just have music playing right now anyway. Now we're going to hit some dirt road. It'd be nice to take a tour through this little uh, business drive. I think it goes right through a big swath of land. But uh, not today. Also, I'd like to tour that house over there. It looks like it's abandoned. In a very interesting location. Standing up. Yeah, even though I moved the bars closer to me a little bit for purposes of having my uh, reinforcement bar up, the gold one right there, I had to push it back a, a bit so I didn't uh, make contact with the, with the fairing so much. But uh, yeah, it doesn't feel bad standing up. And you know, I really, I don't stand up that much unless I really have a good reason to like for these bumps that's a good reason and uh, for sand and gravel I uh, you know I, I found it to be kind of counterintuitive in some conditions I, you know, I just go by the feel of it if it doesn't feel good sitting down I'll try standing up if it doesn't feel good standing up I'll try sitting down. Looks like this camera is coming all wonky there. Alright, 
hopefully that's fixed. Alright, so I think on this one, uh, um, I'll also turn right. Pretty sure. Yeah, this one will take me back out towards uh, the 173, which where we can catch the gravel road that goes through the Bandera Park Natural State Area. But first, we get to go on some gravel for about another few miles. Fire. Yeah, it looks like there must be. Oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. Now the question is, is that the same fire from a different angle? And that's a good possibility. That is a good possibility. I don't have my map up right now, but I could check it. Let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. So we we came from over here and we saw the fire right there. We came around here. We're going this way now. And so yeah, that, that's the same fire. I believe that is the same fire. Yeah. Make somebody mad. But based on the thorns I got on my tire the other day. I don't want to just aimlessly go through the brush. There we go. Okay, so I think that mysteries. Now we should be coming. Yeah, we're going to be going out to 173, and that'll take us out to the. Well, actually, I need to think about this for a second. So, yeah, although it's uh, kind of counterintuitive, but since this is my first ride officially, I, I think I'm just going to let it roll and chalk it up to um, less than another day. All right, thanks for talking me through. Appreciate the uh, advice. But that is what this is all about, having the opportunity to think and relax at the same time. Remember tomorrow. Well, you got to remember tomorrow anyway. Which means you got to do something today so you'll remember it tomorrow. Private property. What that means is that there's a big terrible chunks of that. Just making me screw all over the place. I had an issue boots moment. Alright, so yeah, I think the um, the idea that this this is the first time that this bike had a, an experience in this type of hot, dry condition with the air-cooled engine. I mean, the air is blowing pretty good, so um, this may be actually just an, an extension of the break-in process because I broke it in mostly during cooler temperatures, what we would almost consider winter, winter, uh, Texas winter. But I'm not going to talk about that right now because we're about to encounter a freshly paved road. So we will be on tarmac for the next um, half hour or so. And from there we'll um, go check out our very first historical memorial marker. Second thought, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, 
I'm going to try to cut this camera for now so I have a little bit of juice for later. As soon as I find a little open area to pull over, I'm going to... Alright, so let's turn this off. I guess that one. Still on. Alright, so a lot of things just happened in the last few minutes that I wasn't able to record. But I just pulled over. Because a couple things, <laughs> a lot of traffic, first of all, the, I was heading into the wind at indicated 70 miles an hour and my mirrors kept tilting back down so I couldn't see behind me. I couldn't see the traffic that was uh, <laughs> queuing up behind me. And, and then I saw a bunch of side roads that I was thinking about taking to get around to this um, first historical marker that I was going to take a look at, but instead... I came across this one and so I'm assuming you can see it there's the fire that we avoided earlier that's Medina Lake this is Highway 173 Hondo's down this way and this Vandenberg located on the banks of Verde Creek Arroyo Verde Vandenberg, founded in 1846, was one of the colonies established by impresario Henry Castro. Immigrants settled nearby and began farming. They dug a trench eight feet wide by six feet deep to protect them and keep their cattle nearby. Worship services conducted by visiting ministries. Hello guys and gals. Uh, were held in homes or under an arbor. I'm not sure what that means. Under an arbor. Drought in 1847 to 1849 caused crops to fail. Many settlers died from cholera. Most families moved to other communities by the 1860s. I wish it said which communities those were. Maybe Hondo, maybe Bandera, Two cemeteries are among the few physical remnants of Vandenberg. So I don't know exactly where Vandenberg lies in the direction of where we are right now. I mean, it says it's right here where, where we're standing. So, I mean, maybe this is about as close as it gets. Maybe that's the old town. Maybe it was just up on the ridge there. If we could find an arbor, maybe we would know. But uh, this plaque here was uh, erected in 1996, and um, I don't think there's anything on the backs of these. No. And so, you know, what's interesting about um, this one it being my very first Remember Tomorrow historical marker from the Texas Historical Commission is that um, what got me interested in this area was um, moving close to Castroville and this Henry Castro fella. Uh, I've already seen several plaques of his and so I think around that um, time this was not the United States so this could have been Texas or it could have been Mexico somewhere right in the in the middle there but I know that the Castro monuments that I've seen earlier that are down this way um, this direction about 30 miles or so they were done in a, around 1841 if I remember correctly so that would be about five years where you know this Henry Castro was was creating a lot of establishments um, in, you know all over this area so pretty interesting well let's get going to our next one and we'll see you there
Yeah, my mirrors are turned back again. When I get going at that speed, uh, they just can't hold themselves up straight. Well, I guess I'll just leave the kit. No, let me turn it off. I'm going to turn it off right here. Alright, so we, um, we're on the back side of Hondo, and I found another one, sponsored by the Hondo Sesquicentennial, Sesquicentennial Committee in Mission Valley following the Texas Emancipation in 1865, so this is about 20 something years after the last sign we saw down on Highway 173, many freed slaves remained in this area on their former masters, the emancipation in 1865. So I guess that's after the uh, Civil War. The freed slaves remained in this area on their former masters farms. By 1869, blacks had organized a church and a school on the north bank of Hondo Creek, about two miles north. church and a school wow okay so eight beginning in 1876 landowner l l white uh, sold small farm plats on the north and south banks of hondo creek exclusively to blacks white and abolitionists before the civil war was a native of massachusetts and a settler in henry castro's colony so again henry castro and a colony and i think he was uh Impresario Henry Castro. So, hmm, that's a twist right there. You got to figure that one out. So, the community on the South Bank was named Mission Valley by Austin Grant, one of the first settlers. Residents on both banks of Honda Creek established common facilities within walking distance of both settlements. And before 1881, their church building housed both Methodist and Baptist congregations and the school. Cottonwood Cemetery overlooks the creek. Its oldest, I wonder if that's the one we just passed. I don't know the name of it. I'll check it later. Cottonwood Cemetery, got to remember that. Overlooks the creek, its oldest tombstone dated 1886. Okay, so that is an interesting date compared to what I was thinking, which would have been much earlier. But in Mas Emancipation Oak was the state of the Emancipation Day pilgrimages on June 19th. So is that, is that Juneteenth? I don't know. Many of the settlers and Methodist church moved to the new railroad town of Hondo, two miles southwest after 1881. So I guess, I guess the railroad must maybe have not have been there at the time, and then it showed up later, and then it became a railroad town of Hondo, and then they moved there 20 years or so later okay interesting uh the baptist church moved to hondo in 1904 descendants of the first settlers lived at mission valley until 1942 when a u.s army airfield was built here the site was made a hondo city park after 1948 so this right here is a big park and it looks like barracks i know on the other side of the road we're going to cross here there's another walking park and if you go down uh, a couple of miles down here to the left, um, there's an airport, airfield, which, with, a, with a bunch of huge airplanes there, like uh, uh, some type of uh, maybe reclamation field or something. I don't know. Maybe a, maybe a cemetery for planes. Amazon box left there kindly well they got a bunch of gymnasium buildings and um, some bathrooms picnic tables volleyball right up here this is the walking park through there maybe we'll take a walk through there one day it's not too big it just basically goes up about, a, about up here to where that little uh, water marker sign is. That's about it. And yeah, that, 
there's the trail right there and, um, and it, it only goes in probably about half a mile I would say it's nice but it's not big so now we're going to go on to uh, surprise of the day which is the third historical marker I wasn't expecting to have a third one today today was a trial run for, for the first one but unbeknownst to me I accidentally came across two before I even got to the first one so I'm going to have to think about that title three two one begin one two three begin one reverse is the end begin in the rear I don't know I have to think through that uh, I'm going to say those are pecans but I'm not an expert Speaking of pecans, I could use some right now. I have another warning shine. You gotta slam these brakes on. Battle of a Royal Hondo. You stay put there, bike. Scratchy. This is gonna. Looks like it's gonna fall over. But it's not. Alright, so what we have here today from the Texas Historical Commission of Texas, we have the Battle of the Arroyo Hondo, 1842, the Mexican Army. So okay, now we're going back to the same time frame that we saw with Castro around the 1840s. And um, let's see if Castro's mentioned here. So the Mexican army, because I think he was Mexican. Uh, so revolutionary Colonel Rafael Vasquez army briefly occupied San Antonio in March. And in July, Texans fought with Colonel Antonio Canales forces near San Patricio. All right, so San Antonio was brought into the mix. And I'm assuming that... Um, Colonel Antonio maybe had something to do with the name of San Antonio? I don't know. Uh, when General Adrian Walls, Mexican forces, so General Adrian Walls is a Mexican force, interesting, advanced through South Texas and captured San Antonio on September 11th. There's September 11th. Wow, what an intriguing day. Texan volunteers gathered for battle. More than 200 men under the command of Matthew Caldwell assembled at Salado Creek, six miles east of the city. Now, when they say the city, are they talking about San Antonio, the city? I'm going to have to look up more information on that. So they're talking about San Antonio and east of San Antonio. That's, you know, just riding a motorcycle. That's another hour away at least uh, from here. So... Uh, okay, let's see. What, are, what else does it say? On well, September 18th, they fought with the Mexican cavalry with losses on both sides. The Mexicans returned briefly to San Antonio before beginning their march towards the border. So I guess they were not doing successfully. Additional Texan forces marshaled to meet Wall's army. And on September 21st, so 10 days later, another battle occurred at Hondo Creek, a Royal Hondo, near this site. So we we'll have to assume that the Royal Creek is down uh, beyond those trees there. And although Texan and Mexican accounts of the engagement varied considerably, reliable sources indicate that Texans plagued by dissension and lack of clear leadership failed in their attempt to rout the Mexican forces. The Mexicans returned home and the Texan, Texas government in response to the 1842 invasions mounted the ill-fated Somerville expedition later that year. Mounted the ill-fated Somerville. So I don't even know where Somerville and this happened later than 1842 so yeah there's a whole bunch of story i think packed into into this plaque so i'm gonna 
do a little bit of research on that see what I can find but just let me give you a little bit of the landscape so I believe the Arroyo Creek they're talking about is right back down through there because it's it's the low point around here and you can tell usually where the trees are at that's where the water's at and if you look out this way uh, it's just flat land as far as I can see all the way to the hill country out there so I think we have a uh, investigation sponsored by this particular plaque because I think there's a lot more to that story um, that can be put on that plaque and, and I'm interested in that so I'm gonna look that up now I, I do like this fence I mean look at this look at this little sticks of wood with this rusted barbed wire I wonder if this had anything to do with uh, the same time frame that looks like it could be an 1842 fence I don't know much about fences but it would pass for me all right we're gonna sign off to the next one I think I just saw some buffalo yeah or are those bison Wow oh my goodness Wow look at that that is just amazing when it makes eye contact it uh, it gives a sensation very intriguing very intriguing but it's obviously more interested in that uh, yummy delicious haystack grass than it is in me so I'm super glad that I got to see it and record it this is fantastic Hope I see you guys again. On good terms, as usual.